bubbles have been intriguing to a lot of people over time. And uh, I think they grab a hold of us. I, I don't know why it is, but I think that somehow or other we are just pulled into it. And some of us, like me, and some of my friends, just, we have it in our blood. We, we can't let go of it. Um, bubbles have intrigued people almost forever. There was a, there was a, um, essentially a physicist um, in Belgium uh, who is blind. Um, he had done an experiment where he looked at the sun for too long, thinking he could do that, and he went blind from it. Nevertheless, he became probably the most influential scientist who had investigated bubbles. He had other people who were his eyes. He used his imagination and they figured out how to do experiments to figure out what is the relationship between the size of the bubble and the pressure inside. Um, a whole variety of things. Um, the, the, the old physicists, what were called the natural philosophers, that's uh, Isaac Newton and his friends, Hooke and the others, we're all interested in everything that's around us, usually asking it in terms of physics rather than chemistry. Um, and bubbles, uh, I don't know if Newton ever did anything with bubbles, but bubbles are a perfect way to ask these questions because here is this object that's suddenly in front of you and it's unlike anything else around you. It's a little like a ball, but if you keep adding air into it, it just keeps getting bigger. It never stops and, and gets to full compression. Um, it's, um, what else is it like? It's not like anything else I can think of. What else do we have that's a few millionths of an inch thick that is here for the moment and then gone, and when it goes, it turns into little droplets. It, it turns essentially back into the liquid. The, ga the structure that holds it together can't hold on if it gets too thin, and as it starts to um, as it starts to fall apart, slow motion photography shows this really well. As it starts to fall apart, it forms into little droplets. And you can, as you watch a pop moving across a bubble in slow motion, you see how all the liquid starts to gather into little bubbles and you see it where the bubble used to be. It's all these little droplets that haven't quite fallen yet. Um, it's really quite a delight. The other one, the other piece of this is if you make bubbles where it's really cold, like 30, 40 below Fahrenheit, um, the bubbles will freeze before they hit the ground. And uh, it's, it, it, if you watch a picture of the thing freezing, it's, uh, it's a very interesting process. Again, the kind of thing that physicists love to watch because what happens is that the thing starts to freeze at several different points. And from each point, it creates um, a lattice work mm. um, of ice. And that stretches out until it hits the lattice work that came from another point. And those two then knit together. So you see this structure that's like a, uh, like a patchwork quilt all over the bubble. The bubble doesn't get any heavier from freezing, right? So it just gets solid. It's very thin. It's, it hasn't increased its size, but more than about 10% in freezing. And so as it lands on the ground, often it will break. It'll look like an eggshell. Um, once in a while, one will land softly and it just stays there. Um, it's quite a delight, as you can tell. <laughs>